Hey guys, welcome back to AFK Journey. In today's video, we're talking about the Primal Lord Lone Gaze. Now, in this one, for most people who started at Global, you don't have this active at the time of uploading this video, but there was a few Global servers that started before the daily reset who have access because the unlocking of this thing is based on your server. So Antilla, who is the guy who runs uh, Pride Win, the website, has been kind enough to lend me his account to jump in and show you guys some stuff. Now, I'm going to go through some of the stuff they have on their website which is a fantastic guide here and also show you some stuff in game as well of the primal lord but then i will come back to this and go through my thoughts on free to play from my personal free to play account once the uh once it does drop in about probably what is it 12 hours at the time of recording this uh before it drops for most players who started right on global now if you started a day or something late then you've got another day or two it just depends. Like I said, it this this opens seven day after the initiation of the server is the way I understand it. So let's jump in and take a look at this guy himself and take a look at what we can actually get from him. So when we take a look at the Primal Lord, you can see here we can if you go challenge. It's going to teleport you over there. You can hit there and you're going to run in. Now, I do like these bosses. I like that they're in the world. This is where the overworld feels cool because you come here and you see everyone just chilling. I think it's pretty cool. So let's jump in and take a look at the guy. So essentially here, uh, when we when we go ahead and we, we, sorry, when we look at the strategy. So let's take a look at his abilities. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to leave it on the brief one because I don't want to get too in-depth into numbers. But his ult periodic, peri periodically... Now, actually, you know what a better description is? Let's go over here to the website. They've got it, they've got it really good. Ultimate. Every 10... like So at 10 seconds, 40 seconds, and 70 seconds, a mist will descend over the battlefield. It will shroud the Wolf King, allowing him to summon a Wolf Pack to attack... Uh, to attack mist covered enemies the wolf king has a chance to dodge attacks within the mist skill one charges towards the farthest target and strikes summon spectral wolves to attack the farthest target when the mist exits uh deals damage twice to targets within a one tile arc and then deals damage to the enemies within one tile and inflicts interrupt effect gains stat boost when defeating a non-summoned enemy so basically the mist thing you'll see it when it comes down there's all these wolves now those wolves don't have like health bars or anything you can't do anything about them you've just got to sort of withstand it so when he does the mist that's when your your, your healing needs to be ramping up so for this reason reason when we take a look at it if we jump over here now for whales and stuff uh using one healer should be fine uh you should be able to get away with it but for free to play especially two healers is probably going to be the way to go okay sorry i don't know what that team was but i wanted to go through and draft you guys some teams that we can take a look at from a free to play's perspective and a paid player's perspective so um you know what we might do we might just quickly bounce over into the pride win site and take a look at some of their notes over here so you can see they talk about smoky smoky is going to be like probably the number one healer and if you're running two healers coco is definitely going to be the other one damien if you have him at mythic plus maybe uh, but Hewan's going to be your other option and if you're desperate maybe Maybe you could try a Rowan if you don't have a Hewan or a Smokey. Um, then we go to DPS options. Odie, I think, is going to be a fantastic DPS for free-to-play players as well. Merrily kind of needs uh, more investment before she gets good. I find she sucks early game for me anyway. Shakira is one that I think you're going to need dupes of. So if you've got him duped up, yes. But if you don't have him duped up, but you've got like, you know, a mythic uh, Cecilia, I think Cecilia is still going to outperform Shakir at one copy. Vala is an interesting one because once the boss does get below 50%, she will be in sword form the whole time. So maybe she she gets a good bit of value out of that. Corrin will need Mythic Plus because that's when he starts dealing his damage. Uh, and Seth, I don't think anyone has Seth on his, their wish list. If you do have a built Seth, you can try it, but I don't think he's, that's going to be crazy. Rainier, don't bother with this guy unless you have him Mythic Plus. That's where he gets his debuff. Our other debuffers are Kruger and Thorin, which are always also going to operate as the tanks. For free to play, if you have a Thorin, I think he's going to be best in this one because Kruger's probably going to get clapped too early uh, and leave your back row uh, free, but you can always play around with it. So then they go through some team setups and yeah this is pretty much my ideal setup in my opinion uh and this looks like a more uh pay to win type team that we're looking at so let's jump back into the game let's jump back into the game and take a look so from a free to play perspective i'd be looking at thorin if you have him Odie if you have him cecilia if she's duped up 
Um, and, and this can, this CC can be replaced. I just think most people went for CC because Arena Store and all that. So I think that's pretty solid. Then best healer, Smokey. Second best uh, is going to be, in my opinion, Coco. So I feel like something like this for a free-to-play, if you have these units, is going to be your best option. I feel like this is going to be absolutely fantastic. You can try and sub out the Thorin for a Kruger to get that the, the, the Death Shred, which is going to further impact your Sasea's damage. But I just think Kruger is going to flop and it's not going to be as effective as Thorin. So I would still go for Thorin if you had him. But if you don't have Thorin, you can try Kruger. Moving on past that... Everyone's got Odie, everyone's got Coco. If you don't have them, I don't I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I apologize. Also, Artifact. Use this Artifact if you have it. Um, if you don't have that one, I'd probably be using this one. Uh, just either one that gives damage. This one just gives haste uh, as well, so haste is going to be more effective for us uh, on this team. But I think for this team, if you don't have Smokey, if you don't have Smokey, I'm going to guess, and I'm going to experiment with this on my account, so don't take this as the word, because you can only do three attempts per day. You don't get to retry, so it's limited testing that we get. But for free-to-play, I feel like, and this is, when I talk free-to-play, I mean double sustain teams. You can feel free to try triple DPS and one sustain, but you need Smokey for that, and I think it's going to be tight. Um, but yeah, I think Hewan in this one uh, is going to be fairly solid. Uh in that that option the problem is you do lose your faction bonus now if you want a faction bonus you can once again try that kruger but once again i do think he will die so you can experiment without the faction bonus running the thorn or with it um and if you don't have hewan um you have to have if you don't have hewan and you don't have um smoky then you have to have rowan because that's the way the game works on the 30 pity uh so then i'd run something like this and once again you can run that if you want or you can stick to that. Uh, and those are your options. And I feel like that's going to be a pretty safe free-to-play expectation. Now, once again, every one's account's different. So if you have highly duped other characters, you can feel to free to try them. But I just think that's like a core staple thing um, for free-to-play accounts that you can get away with. But like I said, I feel like optimally... This would be the ideal team I would bring. And if I had a Smokey, this is the team I would be bringing. Now, I just want to just mention why I put Sasea at the back here. Because when he does the uh, attack, he's going to attack the back ally. And for most people, um, Sasea is going to be your most duped and probably your highest leveled character if you've been investing into her. So I'm putting her at the back, thinking she has the highest likelihood of surviving the attacks than either the Odie or the... Um, Coco, and that is my reasoning for putting her at the back in this one. Now, let's jump over and let's take a look at some more, you know, whale-friendly teams. So in the whale-friendly teams, we're looking at running Smokey and Thorin again. Once again, you can try the Kruger in the tank spot if you want. And then triple DPS. So if you're running triple DPS, if you have, once again, Shakir, Shakir's just fantastic. Um, he's got, he's self-sustaining as well, which is, which is great. Um, and if you have the dupes, I definitely think he is going to be an absolute savage in this. Then we have Odie again. Once again, Odie just doesn't really really fall off he's fantastic but if you have tons of dupes like Antilla does here then I do think Merrily is a great option in this last spot it gives you still you still get a three-piece faction bonus with this type of team uh, but you do bring another class DPS here like another another quality DPS once again highly duped if you're free to play I would not be bringing Merrily I think she's absolute garbage compared to Odie for free to play players but yeah this is more of a whale team so what we're going to do now is we're going to do an attack and take a look at the run uh, I'm only going to do the one attack because I want to let Antilla try and get his highest scores as possible and he can experiment with that but I just want to show you guys this run uh, and let's jump into it so here he goes. Let's put it on two times speed. Just so you guys can get an idea for the fight. Actually, let's put it on one times speed. So that's his cleave thing. This is him attacking the, al the, the ally at the back. And now we're almost 10 seconds in. So now he's going to put the mist over. Okay, so now the mist over the field. Now you'll see the little wolves start to come in. And where are they? It's, it's when he leaves. Here it comes. Here it comes. There they are. You can see you can see the, the wolves like attacking uh, randomly there. You can you can see them like sort of jump in. Now they're not wolves that you can like monitor and attack and do stuff. It's just damage you've got to mitigate and heal through. And that is the basic cycling of his abilities. He has the swipe, he has the lunge, he has the mist, and those wolves. And that's pretty much the way the whole fight works. And it just cycles through that. So there's his lunging attack. Now he's down there. Then he's gonna bounce back out. Uh, and there, there's the mist, and then he goes back to 
back home. Now he has an extra dodge. You can see him getting those dodge uh, symbols, the dodge text up a lot. And you can see Smokey, I mean, sorry, uh, Odie taking a ton of damage there, just healing it up with that Smokey. Uh, being a super clutch healer, dude. Without Smokey, this is going to be a nightmare. But then once again, Odie getting clapped. Um, so unfortunately, you know, you get that. Unfortunately as well, like other bosses, you can't take it off um, auto. If you could take it off auto, you could have saved Odie with like Merrily by jumping her back, I'm pretty sure. But this is where you just start getting overwhelmed. There's five seconds left in the fight. He's got himself 22 chests already. And then look at the rewards here. Now, I've mentioned this in videos before that once this comes, you're probably not going to worry about experience anymore. That's because you get an absurd amount of experience in this thing. 2,397,000. If you're if you're like my main account, just one like and obviously until I got way higher damage than I will get. But even if I get like one million, uh, that's a pretty good buffer for me to where once I do three attacks, let alone extend that across seven days, you're gonna be swimming in experience. So this this is the thing where once this comes out. Experience is no longer an issue. It's only Hero Essence that becomes the issue. And seamlessly chucking this in with editing, because I've got to go through the clearing rewards. What we get from this uh, is pretty decent in my opinion. It's not too bad. Along with all the experience that we get and stuff like that, you are going to get yourself, basically, when we look at these rewards, killed beyond 15 days. So if it takes you more than 50 days, to, 15 days to wipe this guy, this is an interesting one for me, because if you kill it super quick, you get less experience rewards, which is an interesting one. Although so if you're killing it quick, I guess you're getting more damage, more chests, but if you've just got whales killing it, it's a bit awkward. But essentially, no matter what the cause, the worst case, if you kill it beyond 15 days, you're still going to get 10, uh, 10 summons and you're still going to get 100, what's that say, 150 diamonds. Now, if you can clear it within five days, you're going to get 1,000. Uh, you're also going to get a chest for a level one 20 equipment and then also an elite hero and the title as well now as for ranking rewards based on damage if you end up rank 1 to 20 you are going to anywhere in the top 200 you're going to get some extra exclusive equipment upgrades uh and then you're also going to get what's this a frame and a title frame for everyone title if you end up in the top 20 but once again not too bad the amount of experience and resources, including and also hero essence as well, um, that you get is really handy through all these attacks. But also you get a free temple at the end of the day and a free elite hero. Not too bad. That is a look at it. That is recommendations for teams. And that is a look at how the fight goes. I will update you guys on my account when it comes out. Let you know my best free to play options. I'll try to do it close to when it does come out. So you, I, you guys have all the info. But like I said, I gave you my recommendations for free to play teams. And I think it's pretty solid in there. But... As always, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.